For many people, it's not fun trying to keep on top of the bills, feed the family and maintain a home. It really can feel like a losing battle. A lot of people think it's just about budgeting, uh, but for me it's an awful lot more. I am a qualified generalist advisor, but I also loved the fact that it was Citizens Advice Bureau. I make sure that people understand that I am not there to tell them what to do with their money. It's not our business, it's their money. But what we can do, hopefully, is give them some advice or some tips or some help to understand it better and make better, more confident decisions about financial matters. We try to look at their views and attitudes to money because sometimes by actually holding it almost like a holding a mirror up, we can actually get them to look at their own behaviour uh, and their attitudes to money, which sometimes just lights up and actually gets them to start looking at the ways that they can change that to make them more aware or, or better financially capable. What I like to do then is obviously then is actually make, help them up from the first session to the second session to start keeping a money diary. A spending diary because so many of us and I'm sure we've all uh, lots of people have done it uh, where's the mon money gone at the end of this month or where's the month gone at the end of this money so you lose track you don't actually know what you're spending your money on and for some people this can be the eureka moment they don't realize that that two or three cups of coffee um, nice posh coffee places that are around on every high street can actually add up several hundred pounds a year enough for a family holiday just by cutting out one small habit Session one, wants and needs. We begin to look at people's attitudes and behavior. I always finish this off with making your money go further to keep it really positive. Do you know the, do you know the answer to that? Of course I do. It's new, it's shiny, it's lovely. However, the next question. And you got most of you got this. If you don't, you stop. That's it. That's the process over. Do you want it? Yeah. Do I need it? No. Go. Obviously. We'll talk about this later. We'll get there. And then, if it's true of both, you know, it may be that you've got a buying a new pair of shoes or a new school uniform or something. So the answer is yes. I do need it. Yes, I do want it. But before you put your hand in your pocket or in your purse or whatever you do. Basically, every time you buy something, you are making into a, you're going into a contract. There's always someone who can sell it you cheaper, right? I don't buy anything, almost never actually, but the point is, if I ever do, nobody will find it cheaper, believe me. But we'll talk about that as we go along. I want to just do a little exercise, <laughs> um, just, to get us, just to get us not thinking about it. And it's something really weird. You might be a bit confused about what's this got to do with money or anything, but believe me, there's method to my madness in everything I do. So if you could take one of those and, and pass the rest, the rest on. And if you'd like one of those as well. You're a group of strangers, right, who have been cruising around the Caribbean, enjoying the luxuries of a top-class cruise liner. Very nice. However, last night, a very bad storm left your ship in pieces. You are the only surviving members. Uh, you've only just managed uh, to get one small lifeboat, and there's very little room in it, and you only just managed to keep the water out, okay? You have some things in a rucksack which will help you survive once you get to the island. However, you can't take them all with you. You have to choose six things that you would choose. Now, to just make sure it's, it's a visual aid, I've actually done some photo pictures of them. I want you to do the six things that, that you think that you would take. Excellent. There are no right or wrong answers. It was your opinion I was eyeing after there. But you all actually came up with you might say, what. Is, what on earth has this got to do with money or anything else? But the point is, you thought about keeping warm, you thought about food, and you thought about shelter. Now, at the end of the day, when we talk next week about the priorities and the different things we all have to buy and pay for, you actually all thought about the very most important things first. So that's part of what the exercise is all about. Whether you, I'm sure we all know, the other thing about this exercise helps me know, 
is whether people here think about the future. And even if you are, people are on benefits now, they're going to have to start planning for at least a month in advance for when the changes come in. Because you won't get weekly or fortnightly benefits anymore. It will all be monthly. And they'll all have to have their, they'll have their rent and their council tax in amongst that as well. So they might have a lot more money than they used to have. And, but they've got to pay their rent and everything out of that as well. So big changes. And so this is so important to make sure you're confident and able to plan a bit. I want to find out where we're starting from. So this little quiz is just to find out what you're like with your money now. Okay? So basically the questions go from... I think it's Session 11. 2, Making Every Penny Count, hones in on priorities and some maths. This is an area that many people say they are rubbish at, but to be able to complete an accurate budget, we need to know how to convert things from weekly to monthly, yearly to monthly, and so on. I must admit, I shied away from this a little when I first started, but so many people over the years have felt it really empowered by gaining a yeah. new or forgotten yeah, skill. Just sort of give us a total at the bottom after you finish. Okay. So I'll pass those around that way. On the third session, what I like to do with people is actually then start to making sure that we look what sort of bank accounts they, they've got, the sort of bank accounts that would suit them better. Because I, I do a lot of work with young people and they may only need a basic bank account. I do some work with people with learning disabilities and they need a sort of protected sort of bank account or even may not even have access fully to their own accounts. But making sure people get the right account and the right financial product for them. They don't need to know what the Dow Jones is doing or the FTSE. They just don't need to understand the products that they use. The consumer um, part of CAB, we've taken over the whole lot now. So on a fourth session, I like to do things that are being sort of suggested by the group. For instance, there's an awful lot of changes going on at the moment with welfare benefits reforms and, and different things that are going to affect people. So on the fourth session, it's group-led, and then we can finish off with a, a, a better understanding of consumer issues. So by the time we finish these four sessions or three or four sessions, they really have had a really good look at the whole aspect of it. You know, obviously yeah. you'd, you'd weigh it up, wouldn't you? So yeah. you can barter with people. I'm not very good at gardening. I have a garden party. I'll get my friends round, put garden party. I hate gardening. I'll get all my one of the aspects of working in financial capability is sometimes challenging people's habits, behaviour or attitude. Neil Williams, a colleague who works in North Warwickshire, has demonstrated this to groups of frontline workers using a fascinating model. And in a very uh, softly, softly way, look to challenge those attitudes and behaviours. Because that's the next little bit that I want to go on to, uh, is about how our own attitudes impact on our behaviours. This is a, a, a psychological model called Batari's Box. Now, to be honest, it was originally done uh, with regard to confrontation. So it is all about my attitude affects my behaviour, so how I am with you then impacts on your attitude and your behaviour. And it, it, this box, this cycle keeps going round. And if you imagine this in a confrontational concept, if I'm angry and I'm shouting at you, that's likely to make you angry, and you start shouting back, and as that goes round, the volume just, just goes up and up and up. But it's also applicable with regard to any aspects of life. So if you think about what we said about where our attitudes come from, think in particular about spending and spending habits. If our family have had a, a you know, a spend everything attitude, oh, we can have anything we want, let's just borrow to get it, then it's highly likely in your upbringing and if you think about it with friends as well, that you potentially will learn from each other and that will affect your behaviour as this model shows. And that is, you know, how sometimes life happens and certainly with the financial aspects when we're dealing with clients, we have to be aware of that. So we're not just dealing with the individual, we're potentially tackling a household. By the time we have run the four sessions, we have explored many aspects of financial capability, including what our starting point was, our attitudes, personal banking and budgeting, and my personal favourite, making your money go further. I was just looking at it, so just... Um, 
We've got a look on the internet before you go out and they can find the cheapest place. Mm -hmm. Obviously if you've got the internet. Yeah. Or use live because I think it's free, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Free for the first yeah. hour. Um, now obviously yeah. in four sessions we can't make people into financial gurus. But the thing is we can give them a much better understanding of what their attitudes are. Have a look very closely at their own finances and their own products they use and enable them to empower themselves to be more confident financially. We also do special courses that, that, that sit on their own, such as Energy Best Deal, to make sure that people, especially vulnerable groups, people who are on very low incomes or people who aren't connected or in rural areas not connected to mains gas or um, pensioners who don't understand all the changes and don't like change. Some of the other sessions we do like confident consumer um, and maybe coping with Christmas. A lot of families especially on low incomes Christmas is a massive expenditure one of the biggest in the year and trying to pay for that out of one month is impossible. So actually getting people to plan for this thing making them realize that Christmas comes every year it's always the same date, we all know it's coming, so why aren't we better ready and better prepared for it? So I like to make this, just introduce that to them. Um, that can make a big difference on people too. Planning, just a little bit of planning. When working with people with learning disabilities, it's got to be much more visual. It's got to be much more colourful, fun. You make a snowball, Alan. <laughs> right. Now I'm going to give you 30 seconds Right? Yeah. To have a snowball fight. Off you go. <laughs> Come on, pick up a paper and start again. Come on. Make sure the language is appropriate. And make sure you de jargonise everything. <laughs> um, and use signs. For instance, instead of using a sign like agree and disagree, you can just put a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Everyone, everyone understands that and it's just so easy for people. So you just adapt the, the same materials in a way and adapt it to each group you're working with. And they paid me obscene amounts of money in the 1980s. I come from a very, very poor background. In fact, one of my earliest childhood memories is my dad on, on the back doorstep filing down an old Haigny, which they used to be quite big, the whole half these, what Haigny's doing, and filing them down to make them small enough to, to, to go in a shilling gas meter because he didn't have the shilling to put the gas on, but he, if you file down a Haigny... Fundamental it, to everything that I try to do is that I keep it interactive, interesting, but most of all, have a bit of fun. We did have a talk about... I want to appear all grateful, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about that? Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Have a bit of laughter in the room. It's absolutely fantastic. And people start talking and interacting. Um, they learn off their peers and off their friends and the people in the group. They make friends at the groups. And then when you're learning together, it's just so much better. And the learning process is so much more efficient and effective. So if, if the winner would like to come up here, you can boo him if you like. <laughs> I, I am very sort of uh, enthusiastic and, and physical. I like to move around the room. I like to sort of uh, get people up and moving around. Um, but that's just my approach. But there are just as effective um, trainers and tutors out there who do it in a totally different way, who are very much more laid back and relaxed, but just as effective. Uh, when I was first appointed in 2010 as part of the financial capability team, then based in CABs throughout Warwickshire, uh, I was the only one that did not have um, previous experience delivering money advice. So it was quite a challenge for me um, to know how to really engage with the people who I knew needed my support. And my first task was to go and visit the eight amazing children's centres we have in our district, um, which covers 378 square miles. And when I went into the children's centres for the first time, I was given a, an incredible welcome by the managers and the family support team. Uh, sadly, I have to say, this was not reciprocated by the people I was seeking to sort of um, help and support with their financial uh, affairs. Um, I would dread hearing um, a very well-meaning family support worker as I walked through the door into a session where mums and their little children 
were present and she would say, ah, here's Marilyn from the CAB. If you've got any money worries or any problems with debts, if you'd like to have a word with her, I'm sure she'll be able to help you. And I could clear a room at 50 paces. As she said that, you could hear the doors thud as they headed for the hills. And quite seriously, you know, it was really, really bothering me because I thought there had to be a way. I understood why it was difficult for someone to talk to a complete stranger who walks in about their money affairs. I suddenly was transported back to sitting in front of the TV with my three very young children every morning. I think it was probably about 11 o'clock. I'm trying to decide whether we should go through the round window, the square window, or the arch window. And I, I had this memory of how much my own children enjoyed it, and this vision of sitting on the floor with them. And I thought, that's it. That's, that's what I do. I'll forget the parents, not literally, but I'm going to deliver um, my, as I called it, mini money magic sessions directly to the children. And obviously, mums and dads and increasingly grannies and grandpas are also there. And they'll feel confident and have enough trust in me, perhaps at another time, they'll remember me and they'll think, ah, you know, perhaps I'll have a word with her now. And that's how it started. And it has proved um, very successful. Very, very recently, I was looking through on a one-to-one -one session with somebody that we were doing because she wasn't able to come to a group session, so we run a lot of one-to-one -one sessions at the Bureau. When you're working one-to-one, -one, it's very different. One of the things I encourage people in all sessions I do is, for instance, to check your bank statement. It's easy to make a mistake or to pick things up that uh, you've missed or you've spent, and you can keep track on, on where it's going. She had paid into her bank account £1,853.62. And the bank, instead of adding that on, actually took it off. This was several months ago that this happened. And basically that, was, that went unnoticed, believe it or not, until I actually, we looked through her statements when we were doing a, like a, a money makeover at the Bureau. So in one session, that lady was 18, over 1,800 pounds better off from just uh, uh, talking to us at the Bureau. It's worth noting that if you're new to financial capability or have been delivering it for years, Citizens Advice is a fantastic resource. Available online are some fantastic session plans for delivering one-to-one -one or group sessions. There is also a training programme, including self-study packs and e-learning modules, and if you're new to it all, a two-day course. There are often other specialised workshops also available looking at specific areas, such as numeracy. One of the greatest things I like to do at the end of the financial capability is give people ways to actually make their money go further. For instance, I managed to find out all the times the supermarkets reduce their stock and I've got some fantastic bargains. A lot of them have heard about the reduced section in the supermarket. A lot of them don't realise that the supermarkets tend to do it at the same time every day. So I give them the handout of all their local supermarkets. Another one, another a little trick that a lot of people haven't heard of, is if you buy um, clothes from places such as Tesco or Asda or Next, um, if you have a look on the labels um, and you find a little coloured dot on, my advice is don't buy it that day because that is a sign for the staff that it's going in the sale. So I'd hang on a few days and get it for half the price if I were you. Anybody can do it and it's just a marvellous way of making sure that parents create a positive, fun approach whilst at the same time being aware of the services we can provide. What we can do is give them some advice or some tips to understand it better and make more confident decisions about financial matters.